Well, hello and welcome back. Our topic tonight is called complex fractions. Now, they're probably not as complex as we make them out to be, so hopefully I can break it down for you tonight and uh, simplify any fears that we may have had. So, our first step that we want to make a note of in our book here is that our goal is to find a common denominator. And once we figure that common denominator out, we want to multiply each term by the common denominator. Now that we've cleaned things up, our next goal is to make sure that we factor. Okay, we're not canceling a darn thing unless we have factored both the numerator and denominator. Then lastly, we can cancel anything that's on the top and bottom that's the same. So we're going to try a, a bunch of problems tonight. I'm going to start with some pretty simple ones and work our way up to some pretty complex problems um, that we've seen on the past few exams. So stick with me, get the most out of this, pause it when we say pause it, um, and replay anything you need to. Well, we're off and rolling with example one here. The expression that's given here is equivalent to what? So basically, they want us to break this down. All right, we need to find what we just talked about. We need that common denominator. Very simple. Just look at every denominator. You have the letter B, A, A, and B. You need one of every single term you see. So I clearly need the letter A and the letter B. So let's make a note that our common denominator is A and B. Once you figure that out, it's very easy after that. Even though it says complex fraction, it's not that bad, I promise. Just find the common denominator, and now we're going to multiply every term by A and B. Okay, everybody gets it. A and B, A and B. Remember in math, we're balancing everything out. If we do something to one term, we're going to do it to every term. Now, the whole point is that we kill the fraction. Something should nicely cancel. You have a B on top and a B on the bottom. Therefore, I'm left with A times A, which is A squared. Then you have a minus sign. Again, you have an A on the bottom and an A on top, so those cancel. And I'm left with B times B, which is b squared, all over. See how the fraction was killed on top? a on the top, a on the bottom, so I'm left with b. Then there's the plus sign, b on the top and bottom, and a times 1 is a. Now, once you get to this point, some of us make a terrible mistake after this that we want to just make sure we get cleaned up. All right? We have to make sure, after we take care of the common denominator, that we factor. There is no canceling unless you have factored. So just ask yourself, can the top get factored? And I hope you're saying yes. Squared and squared and a difference. That's the difference of two perfect squares. So I would factor the top to a plus b and a minus b. Can the bottom get factored? Well, it's clearly not a difference of two squares. There's no GCF. So I would probably say no. I'm just going to leave it as b plus a. Now you can cancel. All right, so I want to be clear. It's factor first, then cancel. Um, anything the exact same on the top and bottom. Okay, so this is the quantity B plus A. This is the quantity A plus B, A minus B. I would say yes. I would say A plus B and B plus A are the exact same terms. They are not a negative, and if you don't believe me, pick a number for A and B. If I said 2 plus 3, and then I said 3 plus 2, are you going to get the same answer? Yeah, so they're the same terms. So those cancel, and my final answer is A minus B. All right, let's see what else we can work out here. All right, I need you to come up with a common denominator on your own. So think about it. Circle your denominators. All right. What is your common denominator? Let's just list it off to the side. Hopefully you're saying x squared, y squared. Okay, now if you thought x, y, let me show you why x, y doesn't work. If you just use an x and a y here, does that kill this fraction? Does this x completely kill this fraction? The answer is no. It's not, it, this one's too small. All right, so that's why just plain old x and y don't work. Notice I need x squared, whoops, squared y squared. Now does that kill the fraction? Now it's completely gone. So if you're ever uncertain, write down what you think and see if it kills every fraction. All right, so every term should be getting x squared, y squared. I'm going to let you pause it, try it on your own, see if we get the same answer. So pause it, see what you get. 
All right, see if we match up here. I completely killed the x squareds and y squareds on top, so I've got my numerator, which I think is pretty straightforward. Now on the bottom, the, this y only canceled with one of those. That's why I still have an x squared and a y. This x only canceled with one of those. So it was good because it's not a fraction, but I still have one left, so I got x, y squared. Now don't you dare cancel. You have to factor first. Okay, is that F word again? Factor first. So what type of factoring on top? Again, I see difference of two perfect squares. So y plus x and y minus x. Okay, now ask yourself, what type of factoring do you see on the bottom? And you always start with GCF factoring. And I hope you see that. I see that there's an x on each term and a y on each term. So I get x plus y. Now that you've factored, you can cancel y plus x and x plus y indeed are the same thing and again if you can't see that pick two numbers and see if you get the exact same answer and I think you do. So on top I would say I'm left with y minus x and on the bottom xy. Example 3. The biggest deal is just picking out the common denominator. After that I don't think it's too ugly. So what if you don't have all fractions? Well I think it's pretty easy. I'm just going to turn everybody into a fraction and I simply just put it over 1. All right, so look at your denominators. Clearly, ones aren't going to change anything. What is your common denominator? What are you thinking? You need a 4x squared and an x. I'm saying the common denominator is 4x squared. Again, if, you, if you're not 100% sure, write it next to every term and see if it kills every fraction. If it does, you know you've picked the right term. That would kill that completely. One doesn't matter, one doesn't matter, and this x will go into that one. So that is it. We've got it. Pause it, see what you get. So this is what I've got when I've killed my fraction. Hopefully you can agree with that. And again, I have to factor first. Factor first. So on top, I have a difference. Do I have two perfect squares? Well, clearly, this is squared. And what's special about the number 1 and 4? Well, they're both perfect squares, so we do. We should have 1 plus 2x and 1 minus 2x. Again, they are perfect squares. All over, what type of factoring? Well, this is a perfect square, but guess what? 8 is not and x is not, so it's not difference of two squares. Again, I see a GCF. I'm going to pull out a 4x, and what am I left with? It uh, looks like 2x minus 1. If you're not sure if you factored right, it takes two seconds. Distribute this back through and see if you get what you started with. 4x times 2x is 8x squared. 4x times 1 is 4x. All right, let's work out our canceling. I've got 2x minus 1 and 1 minus 2x. Are they the same or are they different by a negative? Again, if you're not sure, pick a number for x. What if I said x is 1? I would get 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. And if I said x is 1 here, I would get 2 minus 1, which is positive 1. Are they the exact same or are they different by a negative? I would say they're different. So I'm going to cancel this and this, but I have to put a negative out front. So I would say my final answer is negative 1 minus 2x all over 4x. Now I know some of you are going to try to cancel these x's here, but remember, I've, I've tried to stress this the past two videos here, you've got to be fair. Math is about balancing. If everybody doesn't have an x, you don't get to cancel. So because this term does not have an x, I cannot cancel. I can't cancel this 2 and 4 because this guy's not divisible by 2 or 4. So there we have it. All right, well, we've done the, the so-called nicer looking ones. They're going to start to look a little uglier. Now, in some cases, you might actually have to factor first. Believe it or not, before you get the common denominator, you might have to factor first. And it should be obvious, if one of these denominators look ugly, then factor first. So let's rewrite this. I have 3x over x plus 3, all over x over, how can you factor x squared minus 9? Hopefully you've got some nice dots there, difference of two squares, x plus 3 and x minus 3. Now that it's factored first, your common denominator is going to be a lot easier to see. So again, look at your denominators. You need one of everything. So clearly you need the quantity x plus 3, but you also need the quantity x minus 3. 
And again, if you're not a believer, watch this. If I just did x plus 3, would that kill this fraction completely? Yes. But would it kill this fraction completely? No. This would still be there. That's why you need both of them, x plus 3 and x minus 3. And again, we're going to do it to the top and bottom. All right, so the x plus 3s are gone. And I'm left with these two being multiplied together. So I'm just going to write that. It's going to be 3x times x minus 3. On the bottom, the x plus 3 goes and the x minus 3 goes. So I'm left with just x. Now, that gets me 3x squared minus 9x all over x. Now ask yourself, is every term you see divisible by something? I would say yes. This term, this term, and this term all have the letter x. So I can take 1 out of everybody. So I would say I have 3x minus 3 for my final answer. Whoops, minus 9. Sorry. For my final answer. And we're done. All right, so like I said, they're going to get a little uglier as we go. This is a great example where it's going to make it a lot easier to factor first. Those denominators are ugly. So pause it for two seconds and factor any denominator or numerator that you can. All right, so the only one I actually could factor was this guy on the bottom here. And again, 4 is a perfect square, and clearly those both are because they're squares, and you have a difference there. So I factor that to 2a plus b and 2a minus b. So we have to be obviously very good at factoring before all these complex fractions work. So what would you say the common denominator, denominator is? You need a 2a minus b, a 2a plus b, 2a plus b, and 2a minus b. So again, I'm going to grab one of everybody. 2a plus b, 2a minus b. And I'm taking the time to write it next to every term. I want to nail this question. It's going to be one of our easier questions on our exam, and we better spend the time to get it right. All right, what can that kill? 2a minus b, 2a minus b. Now, I'm not going to multiply this in my head. Let's just write down what we get. I get 2a plus b times 3a plus b. Then there's that minus sign. Those get knocked out. So I've got 3a minus b times 2a minus b. Then these get knocked out completely, and I'm just left over 2a. All right, let's talk about where people are going to make mistakes. And again, it's what we've talked about the other day. It's with a simple subtracting sign is that's going to throw us off. So here's what I suggest doing. Why don't we put a bracket around this term and a bracket around this term? Okay, so go ahead, pause it, foil each of those brackets, and leave those terms in brackets. See what you get. All right, so hopefully your work follows mine. I, fo whoopsie. I foiled these out, and this is what I got left my minus sign, left them in brackets, I foiled these out, this is what I got, and then you'll notice that I just put my like terms together, and that's what this one below shows, the 5ab and the negative 5ab. All right, now like I said, our biggest mistake is this subtraction sign. So I'm going to go through and subtract, and that means i got to change everybody's sign. So I should get 6a squared plus 5ab plus b squared. Okay, now I'm going to get minus 6a squared plus 5ab minus b squared all over 2a. So again, I went through and I changed every sign. That's our biggest error. All right, now I can clean up the top. 6a squared and a negative 6a squared are gone. Positive b squared, negative b squared are gone. Now I've got like terms, a, b, a, b, so we're just adding the number in front. 10ab all over 2a. Because there's no plus or minus signs, can we clean this up? Well, the a's are going to cancel, because this is just one term and this is just one term. And the 10 and 2 make a 5b. All right, couple more. Stay with me. Now, it wouldn't be any fun if we didn't throw some trig in the mix. So again, I'm going to turn this fraction into a 1 over 1 and this one into a 1 over 1. Now, let me remind you, if this really freaks you out, if trig really bothers you, could you just call all these terms x's? Watch this. I could say 1 over 1 minus 3 over x all over 9 over, what would I have to call this term if I called cosine x, and this is cosine squared x, I'd have to call it x squared, minus 1 over 1. Is that problem simple to solve? If you said yes, then this problem simple to solve. 
It's the same thing, but instead of x, they use cosine squared. No big deal. So what would your common denominator in this problem be? All right, what if you just said x? All right, what if that's what you truly thought? Would x kill every fraction? Yes, yes, but heck no, it doesn't kill this one. So x is not the common denominator. I, of course, I need x squared to kill every fraction. So if you needed x squared, what do you think you need in this fraction to kill every one? Hopefully you've said it, and that's cosine squared. So I'm going to go cos squared x next to every term. And again, it's just like saying x squared. All right, so cosine squared x minus, that's going to kill out with one of those, so I'm going to say 3 cos x all over, that's gone, 9 minus cos x. I lied, that should be cosine squared x. Sorry about that. All right, now it's back to that F word of factoring. Start on top. What type of factoring do you see? Hopefully you're not saying perfect squared. Don't let that throw you. These are not perfect squareds. I see a GCF of cosine. And I'm left with cos x minus 3. Okay, how about the bottom? What type of factoring do you see? Again, 9 is special. 9 is a perfect square. Clearly that's a perfect square. And it's a minus sign. So I would say this is 3 minus cos x and 3 plus cos x. Now again, I can cancel. Um, if you're not sure if those are different by a negative, plug in a number for cosine. Um, for example, pick something you know, like the cosine of 0. If I said x is 0, the cosine of 0, if you picture your graph, is 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And this is 3 minus 1, which is a positive 2. So yes, they are different by a negative, which means I'm going to throw a negative out here. And I get negative cos x all over 3 plus cos x. Now, can you cancel? Can you be, you know, can you explain why you can or cannot cancel here? I hope so. Every term, and there are different terms because of this plus sign, does not have a cos x. So we are officially done. All right, so let's rewrite each of these fractions. c to the negative 2 is going to be 1 over c squared. That negative exponent goes to the bottom of its own fraction. Plus sign. All right. Who's going to go to the bottom of this fraction, the d or the c? Hopefully you're saying just the c because it has a negative exponent. And that means the d cubed is going to stay on top. All over. Okay, now this is just one term because there's no plus or minus sign. Who's going to the bottom, both terms or one term? Again, hopefully just the c squared because it has a negative exponent. All right, so maybe you need to pause that, rewind it. I just want to be clear that the negative exponents, notice they each made their own fraction, okay, because of the plus sign, and they just went to the bottom. And again, that's because of this plus sign. All right, I don't need to solve it. Again, I just want to say, what is the common denominator? Let's see. C squared pops in my head. Just check me. Is C squared the common denominator? Would that kill every fraction? Would it kill this one? Yes. Would it kill this one? Yes. But would it kill this one? Heck no. The bigger one's on the bottom, so C squared's not good enough. How about c cubed? Would c cubed kill every fraction? Okay, I would say yes to that, yes to that, yes to that. So my common denominator is c cubed. All right, now this monster is going to look a little uglier. You have to turn it into a complex fraction. And it's just about negative exponents. Remember, negative exponents go to the bottom of your fraction. So I'm not going to do anything fancy to the top. I'm going to say that's x plus 3y. But now each term is separate. x, y to the negative 1. Which term has the negative exponent, the x or the y? Clearly the y. So you're going to rewrite that as x over y. Then you have a minus sign. Which term has the negative exponent? The 9, the x, or the y, or all of them? I would say just the x. So just the x is going to the bottom. And the 9y is staying on top. Do you see how you had to turn this into your own complex fraction? And I'm going to do one more thing. Again, I'm going to make the tops fractions by putting them over the number 1. So I have x over y minus 9y over x. And I don't actually want to solve this one. The only thing I do want to state is what the common denominator is. What would you multiply every term by to kill each fraction? OK, 
Okay, so look at those denominators. Clearly, you need the letter Y and the letter X. So I would say my common denominator is XY. And again, I don't need you to kill the fraction or clean it up. I just want to state what it is. Let's try another setup.